Good afternoon guys, welcome back to the Kilburn Long Family Channel. So, t today we are talking about and reviewing the Ninja Kettle. Now, I know that in the States, um, you guys don't really use uh, kettles as much as we do here in the UK. Because obviously everybody knows that in Britain we like our cups of teas and our cups of coffees. But I wanted, we've had this kettle for quite some time now and I did want to do a review on this kettle quite a while ago. But I wanted to give it some time to see how it goes and uh, just basically get used to it and actually see if it lasts just as well as the standard kettles that you can get now. We really like Ninja products. Um... You know, we have the air fryers and all the rest of it. And in fact, I don't, if, if you didn't know, Shark and Ninja um, are actually the same company. And, so, and we also like the Shark companies as well. Now, obviously, this is an unpaid, honest review. Um, but I, yeah, I thought now was a good time to get the to get the review done and um, show you guys what we think of the Ninja Kettle. So let's have a look at what it is. Okay, so here it is. Here's the kettle. As I, as I've said to you already, it's been used um, for quite a while now. So I just thought I'd, uh, as I say, give it some time before we actually used it. Um, it comes in two pieces. You've got the base, and obviously you've got the main kettle as well. Um, and you can see that on here you have a hold temperature, um, a start and stop button. And then you've got for speciality teas, your different um, temperatures, your coffee temperature, and just straight boil. Now, what it does is when you put the... I mean, I've already filled it up already, so I've already put... It's still quite hot because I actually not long used it. Uh, well, the outside is anyway, and I've put fresh cold water in there. Um, as you can see, it's got the temperature of the water... Uh, inside not the temperature of the kettle itself but the temp so you have to be careful because obviously it's still quite hot even though it says 29 degrees it's still quite hot because it's only doing the temperature of the actual water now I've just made a cup of coffee and I mean I don't really use this function and I'll tell you for why in a second but I just stick I mean I just stick to this now anybody who lives in a hard water area will know that uh, you always get a, a build up of lime scale uh, and everything else. So sometimes I feel like uh, it doesn't really matter if you buy an expensive kettle because you're going to have the same issue unless you obviously use your descaling and all the rest of it. But even still, just just if you do carry on doing what you normally do and you, you say you don't do all that, it's just going to last last the same. Now, I we, when we first got the kettle, we used this uh, ninety five degree one quite uh, a couple of times. The only problem that I found with it is that it took longer to boil because what would happen is, is it would go up to about 90 degrees, right? And then the boil would slow down and then increase again and slow down and increase just so that it hit the 95 degrees without going over, which meant you had to wait longer for a cup of coffee and in the UK, nobody wants to wait that long for a cup of coffee. You want something that's quick and easy and just get it done. So now we just stick to using the boil, which is no different to a standard kettle, really, if you're going to use it. I ha I've got to be honest, I've not really used these functions, these, these speciality teas. But if you do drink speciality teas, I wonder if you'll have the same the same issue with the the boil thing because obviously the longer you have it on boil the more uh the more electricity you're going to burn now you've also got a hold temperature here which is quite good it's quite good if you want to um you know make a cup and you know you think you're gonna have another one after which people tend to do with teas don't they with teapots and stuff like that so that's where it's quite good now the only thing we've struggled with with this kettle as well is Sometimes the lid sticks like this. Look, so it's still under warranty because it's only, I think it's only a year old. And sometimes you just have to use two hands, but I'm not using two hands because I'm holding the phone at the moment. And it will pop up uh, if you hold the button down and just tap there. But you shouldn't really have to be doing that. And if it's only a year in, then that could be a problem. Now, it's probably just related to this kettle. Probably doesn't happen to all of them. Or it could be that there's a bit of lime scale stuck in there. In the, in the, which water doesn't really get into that section. So, oh, it's a shame it's not opening. One second. Let me just open it. Right. 
so I've opened it. I had to do the technique that I said by holding the button and tapping the top. And there is no lime scale in that section. You can see there's a bit of lime scale in the bottom of the kettle, so it does need descaling, like every kettle. But for the price of it, do I think that it's worth it or, you know, am I happy just to replace the kettles? I'm probably happy just to replace the kettles, to be honest. But that's probably just because I don't really use these other functions. So if you're not going to use these other func functions and you just want a quick cup of coffee... I probably wouldn't say it's worth buying, but if you do drink speciality teas, then it may well be. Now, let's switch it on, and I'll show you what I mean by the temperature. So, if I push start, there we go. It makes the standard ninja sound. You've got a little light on the on the edge here. It does, seven cups. So, you'll see the temperature will rise, just here. Up, as it goes up to the 100. Now, I've put in enough of four cups now the other thing i've noticed is this is with this as well is when i turn it this way see the flickering what i find is that it doesn't always look do this it doesn't always boil properly and you think you've boiled it because the kettle will switch itself off and if you don't check this then you pour your cup you've wasted a cup because you're going to have fairly warm potentially a cup of coffee so I always make sure that it's that way the problem for me is I'm left-handed so ha having the kettle that way could be a bit of a pain for me but as you can see it rises quite quickly but if you put it onto the 95 degree like I said it will slow down and then it will speed up again but um, that's what I mean so we just keep it to the keep it to the hundred degrees and let it boil I mean the other thing you can do to be honest is let it because you can see the temperature on here you could let it boil save your electric electric really by letting it just go straight to the 100 degrees right and then wait for it to cool down to 95 degrees before you pour your kettle and it uh, before you pour it and in many ways that actually might be um, cheaper on your electric to do so look we get to 100 and then there you go to switch itself off just like that saying it's at 100 degrees but as I say, when you boil it at 95, it just takes a, a lot longer for it to actually get to that stage, which is bizarre, really. But, I mean, it's, it's I mean, style-wise, it's quite nice. Um, we had the one cup before, and we liked the one cup, but the problem is if you've got guests, it's a pain, because you just have to keep boiling and boiling and boiling, which, again, in a cost-of-living crisis, makes no, it is a bit of a problem when it comes to the... Um, when it comes to the electricity usage, and there's your filter there. We never fill up from this the spout section. We always fill up from in here. And like I said, at the moment we need two hands because the lid just sticks. I should probably get it replaced, like I said. And I would hope that it's not a common fault. Now, if you have already got this kettle and you find this to be a common fault, let us know in the comments. Be interesting to know. But I mean, it is like I said, it is stylish. Um, but I wouldn't say it's anything special when it comes to your standard household kettle. Unless, of course, like I said, you like your speciality teas. That's about it for that, um, for the kettle. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said to you, we really like Ninja products. Um, but out of all the products that we have and, and Shark, I would say that um, that's probably the one that's, oh, I want to say most disappointing but then what what can you expect from a kettle? Do you know what I mean? It's a basic, a standard household item. Um, and I think it's more of a cost, to be honest. I think for me, I'd love to be able to try out the ones that um, link with Alexa, just because I am, you know, I'm in the lounge because I'll bought the kettle and it might, it'll do it. That's the height of laziness, I know, but it's, you know, it's just something to try out, I suppose. But with that, guys, I mean, like I said to you, I did make a cup of coffee. I mean, it makes no difference to the taste. 100 degrees is 100 degrees. Um, but yeah, with that, guys, that concludes this review on the Ninja Kettle. And thank you again for watching this video, and I'll see you again soon. Ta-ra for now.